Must be a way across. Solstice? The gods? Are they dead? How can this be? As the cursed tendrils slacken, Zorstissa inhales deeply, air wheezing into her throat. Wheezes become a hum, then a gently wavering song. A champion I called. My champion did come. First among my chosen, first among them. Together we gazed into the black. We turned our backs to it. We turned. We turned. You have come, my prince, my chosen. It is not too late, not yet, but almost. I saw it as I drifted here, at the midpoint between reality and oblivion. I saw, I saw Rivalon, but there was no Rivalon. There were no people, no ancient empire, None of our people, none of our great works. I grow cold now, even thinking about it. It was not a dream, God Woken. It was a threat. A promise from our enemy. The enemy you and you alone can stop. It was a vision of the void. And it made me tremble with fear. Yes, my prince. I, the goddess, I who created you, tremble. Soon the Severed will be nothing but morsels in the moors of the Void. Unless you do as I bid you. Do what I blessed you for. You have already set loose some of the powers locked within you. But there is a great well of possibility as yet untapped. You cannot stop until you ascend to the highest heights of your power. You cannot stop until you become divine. Like Lucian, you will be called to unite the powers of the Seven against the Void. Like Lucian, you will lead our proud people to preeminence. But unlike Lucian, your weakness will not lead you to foolish failure. She opens her mouth to respond, but stops dead. Her head jerks from side to side, searching for something unseen. You, you must hurry. I hear it singing to me. Fire and ice, death and skulls, blackness, blackness, go! White hot cold pierces your heart like a blade. You are frozen to the spot. The burning cold pumps through you like a curse, and then... What's happened here? Where is everyone? Well, at least they added a shrub to the ghastly place. I'm not sure, Quercus. I rather liked the tree's ornaments.
I cannot bear you away from here. You must find other means so that we can leave. Death washed over me as we entered this place. I felt many lives extinguish in a single moment. But others still draw breath. They are sheltering below decks. The one who brought us here. The demon that wears the face of my kin. Only she can set the course back to the land of the living. She is here still. I can feel her. It's so cold. I haven't felt cold in centuries. What happened? I just remember... Oh no. No, that can't be right. This... This is... Wonderful! What a fascinating experience! And I will be able to spend eternity studying you creatures. No more having to watch from the shadows. No more having to walk mysterious social tightropes. The skeleton pulls a notebook from the folds of his robes and starts scribbling. As you walk away, you hear him muttering about Observations on the Mortal Races, Volume 1. Fane is busy scribbling in his ephemeral notebook. Where have you been? I can't keep this up much longer. We need to go. There's no time. I can't hold us here. Brace yourself. This might hurt. A lot. The chill of the Hall of Echoes clung to the Lady Vengeance as it returned to the shores of Reaper's Coast. The Godwoken were alive, but what of the gods?
What's that quaker? Solid ground yeah. materializes beneath your feet. Your weight falls back into your body all at once, and bright sunlight stings your eyes. As your eyes adjust, you realize you're still aboard the Lady Vengeance. A gust of fresh sea air caresses you, and warm sunshine prickles your skin. <coughs> oh, one moment, please. <coughs> oh, just a moment. Malady explodes in a fit of retching that racks her body. At last, she sneezes and expels a glob of something shiny and silver onto the deck. It wriggles quickly off the siding and plummets into the sea with a splash. Ah, better. Let's not do that again any time soon, hmm? Oh, don't start. It was all I could do to save a few of them. It's no mean feat bringing an entire ship full of unspent souls to the Hall of Echoes, you know. I managed all the interesting ones, though. You're welcome. I do hope you learned something useful on our little field trip. Desperate how? I see. So, your god seemed uncharacteristically frightened, told you the void was coming, and that only you could ascend to divinity, after which you felt a cold deep within you. Well then, it sounds like you need to ascend, doesn't it? And quickly. She inspects her fingernails with great attention, then looks up at you from under an arched eyebrow. Did they mention how you were meant to become the next divine? Oh, what confidence you inspire. Luckily for you, Mama Malady is here to help. We already know you can bless, but as far as I know, you can neither see source nor take it as you see fit. I may not know much about divinity, but I do know that any god woken worth their salt will know how to perform all these oh-so-fantastic feats. You need to go see the Meister. As have I, but not in the ways a true god woken can. Forget those ghastly little jars and wands to which small people must resort. You ought to be able to see and speak to the spirits that wander our realm. And you ought to be able to extract the source they leave behind, too. All this just by your little old onesie. No devices, no gimmicks. When you're done, you'll be able to amass and unleash quantities of source so great that Lucian himself would blush. I quite look forward to seeing it. Oh, she's got one of those things in Driftwood, you know, the building where people go and they do things inside of it. Uh, home, that's it. She's got a home in Driftwood. Give me your map. There you are. Tell her I sent you and she'll handle the rest. You're at the beginning of a long journey, Godwoken. Long, but exceedingly interesting. Now, I must be going, and so must you. Shopping. Why, our faithful little sloop, of course. We can all ride together. Won't that be terribly fun? Before you go, if I'm not back by the time you find out where our journey takes us next, you can call me back here. Tell the ship. She'll know how to summon me. And in the unlikely case you don't manage to do whatever it is you'll need to do to become what you need to become, you could call me. But I would be grateful if it doesn't come to that. Damn it, is nowhere safe? Red robed lunatics at sea, those void woken seedlings in the swamp, it all points to the great acorn. It's coming, Quirkus! What if it's too late, hmm? What if the Knights of Dre are too far ahead in their plans? At least here, our shield's ignorance can be forgiven, Quirkus. 
The Knights of Dre do not go out of their way to boast about their existence. You know their order, my friend. Mystic Squirrel Knights, sworn to the Great Acorn, trying to bring about its return. The squirrel absent-mindedly runs a paw over Quercus's spine. The air fills with the sound of soft, dusty purring. They plan to inherit the everlasting forest once the acorn drops and the world is rid of all giants. They believe that only the arboreal will and should survive. I... I don't know. I am trying, of course. But how does one battle a power like the Great Acorn? The Knights of Dre are a dangerous, dangerous order. Look together, Quercus. We can develop some magic to save us from the Great Acorn, if our shield can keep us alive. Yes, yes, it has done an admirable job so far. It certainly lasted longer than I thought it would. But does it understand that we could be wiped out at any moment? Does it understand the risk? Huh. Trust. Do you remember trust, Quercus? I'm not sure I do. Well, yes, of course I trust you, Quercus. You're different. But perhaps we should show a little faith in our shield, too. The squirrel reaches out and touches your ankle sending a hot flush rippling through your body. Your mind's eye sees new potential spells swirling before it. Now, listen carefully, S.H.I.E.L.D. The plan is thus. Do not die. If the S.H.I.E.L.D. can hold up its end of the bargain, we might just have a chance to complete our research. We might make it yet, Quercus. in blades, bows, and bewitchment. Oh, I see you have a full contingent already. Then I'll leave you be. Hello again. That's twice now you've saved my skin. And I think it's time to start repaying the favours. I could fetch some stuff you need, maybe. Mar always said I was a great runner. Sure thing. I'll start hunting that down right away. Don't wait up. Hail, friend. And remember, in Lucian's love there can be no wrong. Down. 
You can put a price on the warriors I have for hire, but you can't put a price on the glory they'll win. Paradise awaits, my friend. Not an actual paradise, of course. I don't think there's such a place in all of Rivalon. Paradise Downs. My parents still sow the soil there. And if the Order hadn't called me to its ranks, I'd still call their farm my home. I miss it. I miss them. They've been forever understanding of my duty. But I admit, I've been neglectful. I have some wrongs to right. I expect Malady has an answer to that. It seems she's got it all in hand. I hadn't realized I was in such illustrious company when we met before. Most fascinating, the things I've been hearing about you.
that you're, uh, how did Malady put it again? A godwoken. Yes, that's it. Quite wrong. Tarquin pauses, taking you in. Genial smile and calculating eyes. We may not have always seen perfectly eye to eye, but that would be the makings of a truly dull relationship anyway, don't you think? A wise attitude. Most wise. I'm sure we can build something magnificent on these foundations. Why it was your ally, Malady, who spared me. She claimed that I might be of some use yet. Rather flattering to enjoy the favor of such a powerful being. This again.
As you approach, the silent monk puffs a bit of air from between her stitched lip. The silent monk cocks his right ear to... Quackers!
rubbish. If you don't see me, blow the whistle. Then I'll find you again. The angelic figure stands upon a mosaic that depicts a dragon, or a leviathan. You no longer look without, but within. You understand where your path must take you.
A dying shark lies gasping on the sand, bleeding from the mouth and gills. It turns its dark and soulless eyes to you. Its bloody gills open in search of water, but find only air. It gasps in the air, struggling for the breath to speak. Its own blood froths at its mouth. No, die here. <gasps> Monsters in the water. Monsters in the deep. Monsters bigger. <gasps> more and more growing. It looks at you with its cold, flat eyes as if to say, do what you will. Then it turns away and gets back to drowning in the bloody sunshine. It looks at you with its cold, flat eyes as if to say, It looks at you with its cold, flat eyes, as if to say, what are you waiting for? A boy at swim. Your name is Joe. You're nine. You're brave. You're off to see your mum. A shadow moves below you. A jagged vice closes on your thigh and pulls you down. Water fills your lungs. Blood billows.
someone in its claws. I'll yield to none. Be real, not real, not happening. 
No, it's not a true. It can't be true. I remember one just like this. White as driftwood salt, the dwarf flinches at your approach, yet she holds a short, clean blade aloft. Her fierce stance can't hide the trembling of her fingers. Back! Get back! I'll kill you, just like the rest of them. Shh, lass. I know you're all a fright. In times like these, I don't blame you. But I ain't out to hurt you. Now, why don't you take a few breaths and tell me what happened? She slumps, all bravado draining from her. No, no. I've never seen anything like those beasts before. Are, are they gone? Void walking, you mean? Poor thing. No wonder you were scared. I'd be scared too. Those? Yes. Worst ones I've ever seen. Ripped through the Magisters. The dwarves. Dead. 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 And the sorcerers. Sorcerers. Gone. Her eyes stare vacantly into the distance, glassy as marbles. It's not cold, yet her shivering is relentless. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Duna's beard. Lohar. My b -b boss, Lohar, will want to know what happened to them, but I. I can't remember. Lohar, eh? Where will I find this boss of yours? Oh, well, you'll find him in Effie's Emporium, leave for Black Ball. He's a fine man, a little gruff, yeah, but he's the only one in Driftwood wanting to help and not hurt. She looks up at Beast through tear-stained eyes, but you can see her resolve hardening as she remembers who she is and what she stands for. I... I... Oh, Seven Sympathy. I saw those things dragging the sorcerers along the cliffs towards the Wreckers' caves. I... I... Oh, no. No more. It's gone. She flinches at the slightest rustle of wind through the long grass. Terror in her eyes, she stumbles away from you. 